Defund the police. You've heard that plenty of times. A rallying cry heard throughout many demonstrations over the past couple of years and a political talking point as we go into the midterm elections. But are police departments really losing funding? Working with our stations across the country, ABC News launched an investigation analyzing police budgets of over 100 jurisdictions. Joining us now is ABC News Chief Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomason. Pierre, we've heard the phrases we just said, defund the police. But what is actually happening in police departments across this country? Guys, in the wake of the vicious murder of George Floyd, police departments already facing questions regarding bias toward minorities came under even more scrutiny. The term defund the police was coined and soon became a topic of national debate. It's now popular down the stretch of political races as well. And as we head toward the midterm elections, we pose the central question. Exactly how widespread did the funding become and did the police departments really cut budgets? With less than 25 days left until the midterm elections, the rhetoric in some of the high-profile races is ramping up. Streets are exploding with drugs and violence, while liberals like Tim Ryan attack and defund our police. Defunding the police is way off the mark. We need more cops, not less. Among the top issues, crime, with the issue of defunding the police often front and center. Violent crime is on the rise. A review of broadcast transcripts shows police funding and similar phrases being used thousands of times in midterm political ads and during candidate appearances. Those ads appear to be breaking through to voters. Our servants, our police, and our emergency services are doing their job well. They have not been defunded. Crime is completely out of control all over this country. Some conservatives are suggesting rising crime rates are the result of cutting police budgets. But our ABC-owned television stations analyzed budgets for more than 100 police agencies and found defunding never happened in most cities. I think that defunding the police has been, at least the terminology, has been so shocking to so many people because I don't think that they necessarily understand the nuances of it. In 83% of the budgets we reviewed, funding actually increased by at least 2% between 2019 and 2022. And defunding often means different things for different departments. In some cities, funding was shifted to different areas of the police department or to social services, not reduced. But some candidates are hyper-focused on appearing tough on crime and supporting police officers. In Texas, Governor Greg Abbott is promising to protect law enforcement budgets if he's re-elected. I support our law enforcement by ensuring that they are fully funded. When we looked at the numbers across Texas, we found all but one of the departments saw budget increases over the last few years. Our budget is frozen. Our hiring is frozen. Disputes over police budgets are also making headlines in local races. Los Angeles County Sheriff Alex Villanueva is running for re-election. Earlier this year, he held a press conference to explain that any cuts to his budget would put lives at risk. People literally are going to die on the streets for lack of us being able to intervene to stop crime. But while the sheriff's share of the county's overall budget has decreased, he's actually been getting more money every year. In fact, since 2019, the Sheriff's Department's budget has increased 8%. Uh, good morning, everyone. When our L.A. station KABC challenged the sheriff, he said it's still a direct defunding because the budget is not keeping up with costs. It's not politically popular to invest in public safety. County officials were blunt, saying the sheriff needs to be smarter about managing his department's $3.6 billion budget. Rayshawn Ray studies law enforcement policy and research and says the connection between police funding and crime rates is based more on perception than data. Part of the reason why the defund the police narrative has stayed around is because police officers say it and elected officials say it and people believe and trust them. So, Pierre, if defund the police isn't actually happening, why is that phrase still being used? Well, it's very effective politically for uh, some people who are trying to sell fear uh, in some regards. And what we've seen is that in political races, you know, the notion of crime is a hot button issue that can be used over and over again. But when we just looked at the numbers, again, 109 jurisdictions we looked at. 91 actually increased the funding to their police, so it just didn't happen on any wide-scale basis. But there's also this idea that, uh, I guess you hear defund the police, you think they're going to have fewer resources, uh, fewer officers, and that's going to lead to more crime, but it's not necessarily that simple. 
It's not. It's a very complicated uh, situation. And at the end of the day, TJ, it's about how effective are you deploying the forces that you have. And many of the smart police commanders around the country are saying that they welcome, they welcome outside forces to help them uh, do the policing job. Many of them say that they are asked to do too much. So some police commanders, for example, welcome having mental health experts come in and consult with them when they have a person in crisis in the community. So at the end of the day is, are you really helping the people or are you just talking the talk? Mm -hmm. Well, ABC Chief Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas, always a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.